Rebecca. Yeah, my name is Samuel Rebecca. I'm Titi Harley. I'm Kian Harley. My name is Adi Yemi And my name is Fogu Segun Awudipe. I thought it was awesome, um, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it was a great time for us to share a moment together before um, being mobbed by over 200 guests at the wedding. And it was just very intimate, it was raining, it was very romantic, and it also gave us a time to kind of, well, at least for me, it gave me a time to kind of clear my head for a second before going into the church and just kind of, I don't know, living in the moment of uh, being able to marry this beautiful woman here. So I thought it was awesome. The decision to actually have a first look uh, was, I think, was a great decision. I, I don't regret anything about it at all. I mean, for me especially, I think it was that time for me to actually live in the moment, to actually enjoy and soak in exactly what was going on. Uh, when I saw my wife, uh, you know, in a dress, you know, she was looking very beautiful. She looked like an angel, you know, and having our friends around, you know, to help hype up the, you know, the, the, the moment, it, it was it was really, really, really great. I and mean, I don't think it took away from it, you know, her working out the how at all. When I saw her doing the first look, uh, you know, I was happy, you know, and, and pretty much like I said, I saw you in the moment. First look is very important because um, I think traditionally, if you don't have a first look, after your ceremony, you have to really take pictures and find different location. Whereas I feel like in the morning time, if you just get over to the and spread, make a spread, share spread. And I think being a vendor, I realized that from doing several weddings that when you do a first look, it, it gives you that intimate time. I don't think that it took away from walking down the aisle because um, when I walked down the aisle, um, I saw Shelby shedding tears. And um, for me, that was really, really special because uh, I feel like for anybody that's worried about taking away from that special moment, um, it's never as special as walking down the aisle and actually realizing that you're walking into your future. And um, I think that's always going to be the icing on the cake. So it didn't take away from it at all. I was happy with the decision. Um, I think though it came from a more traditional point of view of, you know, you don't see the bride until she comes down the aisle. So um, that was why I mainly get pushed for that. But um, I don't I don't regret the decision. It was still an emotional time to come walking down the aisle and see Sammy standing at the end. Um, so it was it was good for me. <laughs> well for me I was trying to go to a different approach. Obviously see her before the ceremony. Because I was worried about I was going to be crying. I didn't want to be one of those guys who were crying to go wedding day. But uh, everything worked out well. I saw her walking down the aisle and still got really emotional as well. So, but so far, so good. Everything worked out well. Um, so we used the Fillmore in Silver Spring. And I think um, I looked at several locations. But for me, I just wanted something that really stood out. Um, and I think above all, the dynamic of the space um, and I didn't want for the head ties to kind of cover the guests that were in the back because normally the older folks would sit towards the front, the younger folks would sit towards the back, and with 450 to 475 people, I kind of wanted like my younger folks to be more relaxed and to still be able to be a part of the experience and for the older folks to be able to also have their own sort of atmosphere without both of them clashing. And I think the lighting of the space, um, it's multi-million dollar lighting um, and that right there was very important to me as well as um, they had a lounge area that we wanted to use for the after party um, while the band was playing upstairs so that was very important um, when I changed the space. Uh, one of the benefits is you don't have to worry about the logistics of moving people from a church or wherever your ceremony is held to the reception venue so it really worked and was easier for us to just we, and we found a space that could accommodate that too so um i think once we found that it was it was a preference that we have everything in one location okay so when i went to look at the space and i saw that um there was a um lounge area automatically i knew that i wanted to separate the spaces because when i go to weddings a lot of times I'll see where they turn off the music and the younger folks kind of go sit down and then the band comes on and all the older folks started dancing. So I really wanted to give everybody an experience without taking away from one or the other. So we decided to um, keep the band playing but take the DJ downstairs so that the younger folks could continue with the experience that we were having. And I think after dancing with the band for about an hour and a half, we went downstairs for like uh, maybe an hour and a half to two hours. Um, we had like midnight snacks and we had a whole different experience downstairs with um, 
our our guests while our parents had a good experience of with their guests. And um, for me, I feel like it was priceless. Um, everybody had a great time. The next day, I was getting text messages like, "Let's do it again." I'm like, "No, we're not gonna do it again." But um, it was just great, and just seeing the, the space automatically gave me that idea to separate them and um, you know just make it different and make it easier to make it on. So we, yes, we both did um, change during our reception, and, and it, I wasn't originally planning on doing that. I assumed that I would love my dress so much that I wouldn't want to take it off, but when I went dress shopping, I actually found my wedding dress, but also found another dress that I fell in love with, but it didn't feel right for ceremony. So thankfully, it fit in our budget, and I was able to buy both, and we decided to do a wardrobe change after our first dance during our reception, and I thought it was a great idea. It was fun. Um, it was kind of a, a signal to our guests that this is a party portion of the reception. I felt like we both looked good, so it was just kind of another fun thing to throw into our, our wedding day. So I would do it again. For me, it was a lot <laughs> simpler. I simply could not choose if I wanted to wear a white jacket or a black jacket, so I just went with both. And since she was changing, I figured I should change too. So that's what we did. Well, yeah, the colors were me. I like green, <laughs> so I started there and looked for colors that worked with it. And um, that was that was really it. There wasn't a whole lot more to it than that. Yeah, I had no decision in the colors at all. If I had to wear pink tuxedo, I would just go with it. It was all her decision with colors. I mean, advice-wise, I would say maybe when you, your husband, father's handing you over, maybe to remove the veil, because um, it kind of makes for a whole different view without the net being in your face. I uh, took up my veil before, um, or just soon after arriving at the altar, um, and the reason for that decision was because I just I didn't want to witness the whole thing my own wedding behind a net pretty much um, so I wanted to be my husband to be clearly I wanted to see everybody their parents you know family and friends um, and I I was happy with this decision my dad took off the veil um, but I wasn't as particular about that as I was with just having it off soon after getting to the altar because um, I just I didn't want that obstruction Definitely the first look. I think that was an awesome time for us to just kind of have a moment together before going to the church and, you know, being kind of overwhelmed by over 200 people that were our guests. Um, I also think it was a good time to just kind of have a, a moment together by ourselves. It was only three of us, actually. It was PT and I and our photographer, Wale. So um, it was very romantic. It was raining a little bit. It was a little cloudy. It was just the two of us in a pretty empty courtyard under a gazebo, so I thought it was it was perfect. I think that um, for me, the fondest memories were the the parts that we really couldn't necessarily anticipate. So one thing is our photographer at the end of the night had us take a few um, photographs that you know sort of just wrapped up the evening, and it was a, or similar to the first look like another time when it was just Tian and I kind of taking everything in while all of our guests were still dancing and enjoying themselves, and it was. It was just kind of a great wrap up for it for the evening. So I think that in addition to the first look and seeing our families just so happy and seeing all of the planning and the praying and the sort of coordinating all come together was really, really special. I think my fondest memories was seeing all my family members together, family members that I hadn't been together for like 15, 20 years, and just knowing that everybody was there for us and that actually meant a lot to me. Um, it actually got me uh, really emotional at, all, uh, at a particular um, time. And um, that was my fondest memory. The second one I would say is the ceremony itself. Um, it was beautiful. Seeing the doors open for the church was just kind of overwhelming for me. Um, I didn't cry though, but I did cry at the first look though. So that was very emotional, but um, it was just a beautiful ceremony, great songs, uh, an excellent um, preacher. And thirdly, I would definitely say the reception was just extremely fun. It was an awesome time to see all of our family and friends dancing and mingling and enjoying each other's company and the food and everything. It was just, the whole day actually is, was just uh, incredible, so I would say everything. I think my fondest memories, the first one I actually was not involved in, um, was in the limo, I saw the videos while I was sitting in my $800 rented car that uh, I was just looking at the back of the driver's neck. And I was looking actually through my social media and realizing that in my 
in the limo with my husband in the bridal train, they were having a party. <laughs> so don't get the car. Don't do that. Um, and then my next one was my brother. Um, he was my master of honor. I had a maid of honor and a master of honor, my younger brother. And um, I didn't cry throughout the whole day because I really like told myself, you're a good girl, you're not gonna cry. But then when he really started telling Shegu how, you know, he was giving him um, his most important gift and, um, you know, it's now time for Shegu to take that and um, keep it safe, basically. That's when I really shed um, a tear and I realized that I really am a wife and um, realized the responsibility that's gonna come with it and, and um, that just really got me going. So that's probably my fondest memory of the day. First thing I heard when I got up to actually start dancing to my song, you know, it was like one of my friends screaming, no hands, no hands, no hands. And I turned around and looked at it and it was really serious. It was like no hands, like meaning I have to go down there and remove the goggle without my hands. And basically I took it on as a challenge and you know, basically it kind of, I, you know, the situation a little bit, you know, you know made, made it a little bit more, more fun for me. And uh, pretty much, I went down and got the garter with no hands, and I came out with the garter, uh, with my mouth, with the garter in my teeth, you know, basically, and I just got up and then just turned around with them, to them, and just, but now what? You know, I got it without, uh, without using my hands. Well, for me, it was kind of fun because I, I felt like I raised the bar for them too. So basically, we had a lot of bachelors you know, sitting at that table. So basically, they know that we expect something more from them basically when it's their turn. But it was all fun and game. I think everybody liked it. I mean, the parents really, really liked it. My dad was very, he was very surprised and shocked. Like, this guy, like, I know you're a bad boy. This one that you displayed today, you're a bad guy. Like, you know, the, the parents had fun. We kept it PG rated. I think that's, uh, you know, a moment that people look forward to in weddings, you know, and I don't think that basically, you know, the bride and the groom should deprive people, uh, people of that, you know, it, it makes for a great fun in, uh, during the wedding. I think that the advice I would give to other brides is first to think about the top three most important things about the day for you. So you're going to feel like everything is important. You're going to want to spend equal amount of time thinking and investing in all the parts, but unless you have an unlimited budget, you may not be able to do that. So pick your top three things and then that can drive your how you prioritize, what you focus on, what you spend on. Um, the next thing I would absolutely plan, um, advise brides to do is, is to pick a planner, a good planner that understands your vision, that really, really wants you to have what it is that you're, you're dreaming about. Um, we had a fantastic planner. We couldn't have done it without the master plan events. Blew our minds. I wish that they could help us plan for this baby because that's baby going to be new. Um, <laughs> so if they add that to their services, we'll be finding out. And I would say for any vendors you decide to choose, just make sure you surround yourself with people that you actually want there on your wedding day. You know, they should be skilled, they should be professional, but they should also be people that you have a good vibe from, that you actually, um, you know, want to have enjoy and spend this day with you so that it's not something that you have to look back on and think, oh, this just made me feel uncomfortable. And I would say on the wedding day, just try to take a chance to just take a moment to yourself. I know for me, I went to the bathroom in our hotel suite for maybe 20 minutes or so um, and just to collect my thoughts. But I think that helped calm me down and um, I don't know, it just kind of set the tone for my wedding because it was pretty stress-free during that day. We, like TT said, we had great planners so that was awesome but definitely take take the time to kind of just collect your thoughts and just try to you know let yourself relax a little bit before getting to the mix of everything okay um i would say my advice to brides and grooms to be or in the planning process i guess uh, just don't forget to have fun um, or don't stress out too much about even the planning process i know it can get stressful and you have so many things pulling at you vendors and family and friends and trying to balance all of that but you know try to enjoy the process um and especially on that day definitely should not be worrying about anything um just have fun you've spent all this time putting the day together and um you've invited all these wonderful people your family your friends you wanted to share the day with so definitely just feel free that day and just have fun and go around and greet your family and friends and all yeah. i actually do agree the advice i do have for girls would be just don't get upset, just enjoy that day. Uh, after all, all that money you spent, just go and have a blast. And so what we did was like we actually hired master plan events and that made the whole situation really easier and smoother. So it'll be something I'll obviously want to do again the same way I did. I would not change a thing about that particular day. 
for other couples, I would say um, make sure that you choose the kind of vendors that are right for you. Um, it's very important to have a relationship with your vendors um, and to make sure that they understand you and you understand them. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, the most important one I would say is get master plan on your team because that is the difference between having a wedding and being a guest at your wedding. I felt like I was a guest at my wedding. Like I didn't have to worry about anything. I literally woke up the morning of and I was part of my bridal party. Uh, I was part of the experience, you know, any hiccups that went on, if there were any, I, 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 I don't know that there were any, but if there were, I definitely would never know about it. Um, and they were really good with working with all the other vendors as well, building a relationship um, and just making you feel um, special on your day. And I think that's very, very important because sometimes you spend so much time worrying about what can go wrong. But as long as your husband shows up <laughs> and you show up <laughs> and master plan is there and God is involved, I mean, you're going to have a perfect wedding. That's for sure. And my advice for other couples would be uh, to just try to enjoy your day. You know, it, at the end of the day, it, it is your day. Um, you've spent a lot of money, you know, make sure that you really take time to actually take in the moment, you know, basically to take a look, you know, see how far you guys have actually come from, from, from that, from when you started to the present time to you guys doing a wedding. Uh, and sec my second advice would be for the groom. Um, yeah, be very, very, very patient and trust in the process. Uh, basically, I think for, for the male, you know, we don't start thinking about a wedding until basically after we actually propose. And uh, but for the female, this is something that they've been dreaming about. You know, they they've had numerous dreams about. They've had they've had play play uh, play arounds with their friends about how their wedding is going to be. So for you, I mean, basically everything is coming at you so fast. But you have to really really trust in the process. Uh, you know, that's one thing that basically in the middle of our planning that I was able to do, and everything turned out great. You know, my wife did a beautiful beautiful job. I, I trusted her, and like she stated, you know. The wedding planner makes all of the difference. Um, for me, you know, it truly really did because basically once the uh, master plan came on board, uh, I felt like a lot of stress was actually relief off of me. Not that I was doing most of the work, but before they came on board, my wife was actually taking on a lot of the challenges and I get to hear about it when I come home from work, which was not pretty. That's not what I wanted to do with my, you know, my day when I came home, came home from work. But once they came off, you know, came on board, everything just seemed so seamless, you know, you know, they, they did a great job. Shout out to uh, Master Plan, you know. Uh, to, to, to this day, I, I, I really don't even know what all the details that actually surrounded our event, you know. I don't, uh, you know. But I, I really don't even want to find out, you know, just keep it that way. But they did a great job. I didn't hear any complaints and, you know, they did a beautiful job.